humans have long fantasized about colonizing Mars. However, all efforts to turn such fantasy into reality have faced a lot of limitations. One of the many barriers to humans freely exploring and inhabiting Mars is the planet's lack of oxygen. But that could change now, and the dream of humans living on Mars could become a reality, as NASA rovers are already there, exploring the possibilities. And one of the rovers has recently found an astonishing discovery that we'll discuss in this video. At an average distance of 140 million miles, Mars is one of Earth's closest neighboring planets. Its distance from the Sun is about 1.5 times that of the Earth, so it has decent sunlight and is habitable. Ever since humans found out that Mars is habitable, NASA started building Mars rovers to explore Mars' surface. Mars colonization has received major interest from public space agencies such as NASA, and also private companies such as Elon Musk's SpaceX. Reasons for colonizing Mars include curiosity, the potential for humans to provide more in-depth observational research, and the possibility that the settlement of other planets could decrease the likelihood of human extinction. Although Mars is habitable, it isn't as habitable as the Earth. And its difficulties and hazards include radiation exposure during a trip to Mars and on its surface, toxic soil, low gravity, cold temperature, and a lack of oxygen. Mars' atmosphere is dominated by carbon dioxide, or CO2, at a concentration of 96% and oxygen is only 0.13%, and that's largely from water molecules breaking apart in its atmosphere. In comparison, Earth has 21% oxygen in its atmosphere. The atmosphere on Mars is not just abundant in carbon dioxide, it is also over 100 times thinner than the Earth's atmosphere. So even if Mars did have a similar composition to the air on Earth, humans would be unable to breathe it to survive. So for astronauts to explore Mars, they will have to bring their own oxygen with them. And oxygen isn't just needed for astronauts or Mars inhabitants to breathe. Astronauts' rocket propellant also depends on oxygen. Oxygen is a crucial ingredient in most rocket fuels, and to burn its fuel, a rocket must have more oxygen by weight. The volume of fuel and oxygen needed to travel to Mars is much lesser than what is required to return to Earth. If astronauts want to come back to Earth, they will have to carry heavy tanks of fuel with them on their entire journey. NASA estimates that getting four astronauts off the Martian surface will require about 15,000 pounds of fuel, which is about 7 metric tons, and 55,000 pounds of oxygen, which is about 25 metric tons. And hauling the 25 metric tons of oxygen from Earth to Mars is an arduous task. And it is extraordinarily expensive to carry anything to Mars, and rockets have limited capacity. So being able to create oxygen on Mars would mean spacecraft can bring less of it from Earth, significantly decreasing their weight. Less weight means less overall fuel needed to generate lift, and less arduous tasks. Now, the good news is that an instrument on the NASA's Perseverance rover on Mars has made oxygen from the Mars' abundant carbon dioxide atmosphere. The oxygen generation was performed by a small golden box-shaped instrument on the rover called the Mars Oxygen in Situ Resource Utilization Experiment, or MOXI. MOXI is a short, snappy name for the tool that can help increase human footprints on Mars. It is a step towards solving the problems of producing oxygen on Mars. Its mission has been in the works for several years, first touted by experts as a solution to the planet's major resource issue. MOXIE makes oxygen like a tree. It inhales carbon dioxide and exhales oxygen. It works by separating oxygen atoms from carbon dioxide molecules, which are made up of one carbon atom and two oxygen atoms. A waste product, carbon monoxide, is emitted into the Martian atmosphere. It takes a significant amount of energy to be able to produce oxygen on Mars. The conversion process requires high levels of heat to reach a temperature of approximately 1,470 degrees Fahrenheit, or 800 degrees Celsius. And to accommodate this high temperature, the MOXIE unit is made with heat-tolerant materials. This includes 3D printed nickel alloy parts, which heat and cool the gases flowing through it, and a lightweight aerogel that helps hold in the heat. A thin gold coating on the outside of MOXIE reflects infrared heat, keeping it from radiating outward and potentially damaging other parts of the Perseverance rover. MOXIE takes advantage of the relative abundance of carbon dioxide in Mars, and it works by sucking in the air in the Mars atmosphere and heats it to an extreme temperature of up to 800 degrees. Once all the air's dust is filtered out, MOXIE strips the CO2 of its oxygen quantities, releasing the remaining carbon monoxide through a vent. With this comes the preservation of tiny new stores of oxygen. In its first operation, MOXIE ran the oxygen production for about an hour, and it was able to produce a quite modest amount of oxygen, about 5 grams, equivalent to about 10 minutes worth of breathable oxygen for an astronaut. Originally, MOXIE is designed to generate up to 10 grams of oxygen per hour, although the amount of oxygen generated won't keep someone alive for long. It's still a key step forward in exploring Mars. 
This toaster size machine has more work to do, but the results from this technology demonstration are full of promise as we move toward our goal of one day seeing humans habituating Mars. One of NASA's plans for the MOXIE is that future human missions would take scaled up versions of MOXIE with them to planet Mars. That way they can make oxygen rather than try to carry from Earth all the oxygen needed to sustain them. And it is expected that future oxygen generators could be much larger and rip oxygen atoms off of carbon dioxide faster. You can imagine something like robo-trees. MOXIE is expected to strip oxygen from carbon dioxide a further nine more experiments for a Martian year, which is nearly two years on Earth, in three stages. This is to characterize how the system responds to different inputs, as all it has left to prove now is that it can survive over the long term, giving us confidence that we can send this technology to Mars and rely on it to get us home. So the first phase will be to further investigate the oxygen production by checking out and characterizing the instrument's function. The second phase is to run the instrument in varying atmospheric conditions, at different times of the day and seasons. While the third phase is to produce oxygen at different temperatures and alter the mode of operation to investigate differences in production. NASA states that if MOXIE worked efficiently with all these phases, they could land an approximately 200 times larger MOXIE-based instrument on the planet, along with a power plant capable of generating 25 to 30 kilowatts. At the rate at which MOXIE is going currently, producing about 55,000 pounds of oxygen would take more than 475 years. But the future MOXIE that NASA is planning will be more efficient than the present 38-pound MOXIE. NASA says that for approximately one Earth year, the new system it's planning would be able to produce the oxygen at a rate of at least 2 kilograms per hour in support of human Mars exploration mission. The stored oxygen could be used for life support, but the primary need is for an oxidizer for Mars ascent and descent vehicle. The carbon monoxide, which is released as waste during the MOXIE oxygen generating reaction, may be collected and used as a low-grade fuel or reacted with water to form methane for use as a primary fuel. As an alternative use, the oxygen generation system could fill a small oxygen tank to support a sample return mission. The oxygen generated on Mars could also be combined with hydrogen to form water, since almost all of the water on Mars exists as ice. Humans have been exploring Mars ever since 1960 for research purposes, and mainly to make it a permanent settlement. And with this new MOXIE technology, we are a step closer to making Mars habitable. Scientists have made it known that Mars will be colonized by humans already by the year 2050. And even entrepreneur Elon Musk has claimed that he is confident there will be a city of 1 million people on Mars by 2050, transported there by 1,000 starships proposed by his SpaceX company, with plans for up to three rocket launches per day. What do you think about NASA generating oxygen on Mars? Did you like the video? Let's hear your views or opinions via the comment section. Subscribe if you're not already, and I'll be waiting for you in the next video.